We are proud to represent the family of Tyree Nichols, also present with us, and of course, is uh, Bishop Williamson, who has been a steady uh, faith leader for us in this ordeal, as well as Kareem Ali, who is a, a Memphis native, who is a, my investigator, but also is a person in the community who, even before the video came out, the community activists were saying that something isn't right about this. So I want to thank all those community activists and all those community people who stood up for justice even before we showed up, even before the camera showed up. I think they deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> and we have the SELC president here as well. Um, and obviously we have the people most affected by this tragedy uh, who are showing such grace under these tragic circumstances. That is the stepfather of Tyree Nichols, Mr. Rodney Wells, and the mother of Tyree Nichols, Ms. Rovon Wells. We can never applaud you enough for your grace and dignity throughout this. So what are we here for today at this hour? We're here to give a reaction to the charges that were announced by District Attorney Mulroy yesterday and to give remarks in anticipation of the last documentation of Tyree Nichols alive on this earth. And so we begin with uh, our reactions to the charges. And we applaud the district attorney for bringing charges against the five officers for second degree murder, aggravated assault, aggravated kidnapping, uh, official misconduct, and official oppression. Very important charges against these five officers. As Pastor Thomas uh, refers, sometimes I'm referred to as Black America's Attorney General. He, and we stand on the principle of equal justice. So let me be exceedingly clear on this point. When we look at how these five black officers who were caught on camera committing a crime, and when we look at how fast the police chief and the police department terminated them, and we look at how swiftly the district attorney brought charges against them in less than 20 days, then we want to proclaim that this is the blueprint going forward for any time, any officers, whether they be black or white, will be held accountable. No longer can you tell us we got to wait six months to a year, even though we got a video with evidence of the excessive force in the crime. No more can you tell us that anymore, because with these five black officers, you all moved it swiftly. And as the chief said, it was important for the community that they took swift action and that justice moved swiftly against these five officers who happen to be African American. Well, when it's white officers, we think it's also important to the community that there is swift action. 
and that we move swiftly to justice. I mean, because let's be honest, let's think about it. This is not the first time that we saw police officers committing crime and engaging in excessive, brutal force against black people in America who are unarmed. But yet, we have never seen swift justice like this. Think about Laquan McDonald in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Attorney Ramanucci, what was that, over a year? 14 months, even though they had that video on day one. Think about the video of Eric Gardner in Staten Island, New York. How long it took uh, Kareem on that one. Think about all these cases, Alton Sterling, Silky in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on video. Think about Pamela Turner, Houston, Texas, killed on video. It took year for them to bring charges in her case, even though they had the video day one. Think about Ronald Green in Louisiana. I mean, had that video for day one, took over a year to bring charges against them. I mean, so many, man, my God. Think about 14-year-old Tamir Rice on video. And why justice didn't move swiftly for any of these black people when they were killed by white police officers. So we have to make the point exceedingly clear. We now have the blueprint, America, and we won't accept less going forward in the future. We won't have black officers treated differently than white officers. We want equal justice under the law. Tyree deserved it, Tamir Rice deserved it, Ronald Green deserved it, Alton Sterling deserved it, Eric Gardner deserved it, Pamela Turner deserved it, all our children. Byron Williams deserved it. I mean, he was killed for riding a bicycle while black in Las Vegas on video. And yet the investigation is still going on over a year. And so we have a precedent that has been set here in Memphis. And we intend to hold this blueprint for all America from this day forward. Yes. Now, also, and you're gonna hear from her, man, what, what grace and dignity for Robin. Tyree's mother. She said previously that she feels God used her son as an assignment. And Bishop Williamson, even though it's very, very painful, and God knows this is tragic, but she believes God used her son as an assignment. Amen. And her and Mr. Wells said this assignment is for reform. Reform that we can try to prevent some of these hashtags of black and brown people being unjustly killed by police. That we can create a Tyree law here in Tennessee. Come on. That's right. That will be very, that will emphasize the importance of police officers, President Turner, to have a duty to intervene when they see crimes being committed, even if those crimes are being committed by their fellow officers. That's it. That will be the appropriate legacy that we give Tyree Nicholson. If we really say we want justice, full justice, it's not just justice for one family, it's justice for all of us. That's what Rovan is praying for. She wants reform. We want this duty to intervene to become Tyree's law, just like they have Carry On Horn's law in the state of New York. And for those of you who don't know that sister as me and attorney 
McElroy talk this morning, Carrie Ann Horn was a black police officer. She witnessed one of her brutalizing a black citizen and she intervened and stopped him. He got assaulted herself when she tried to stop him. But because she intervened, she was retaliated against and she was terminated mm. and had to fight almost a decade long battle to get justice because they had no duty to intervene for police officers before her courageous act. And the issue is we have to make it official. We have to make it documented. We got to put it on the books. We have to have notice that police officers, you have a duty That's to true. intervene when you see a crime being committed. You expect the people to say something? Well, won't y'all show us how to do it? You all go first when you see a crime being committed. And then people in our community will feel a lot more uh, safe when they go intervene and say, we saw a crime. When you want us to tell what we saw, well, you tell what you saw too. Amen? Amen. And so this is what Miss Rowe, Vaughn and Rodney and Jamal and Kiwana and Michael, his siblings, that's what they want. They want reform with these charges. Now, before I bring attorney Tony Ramanucci up to give some remarks before we bring the family, we want to underscore just two more points. Number one, the fact that this unit had engaged in this type of brutality before. Mm -hmm. This unit had engaged in excessive use of force against black citizens before. And, and Attorney Ramanucci and I plan to make sure that is pointed out in the civil case on behalf of Tyree Nichols because as citizens have reached out to us and the family about this happened to them. There's a brother who said four or five days before this happened to Tyree, that same Scorpion unit confronted him while he was in his car going to get pizza. And he said that they used all kind of profanity against him. They uh, threw him on the ground talking about where the drugs and where the weapons and he was like Tyree and put a gun to his head. And this brother, after he survived this ordeal, he said he called to the police department twice to internal affairs, twice. And they never responded to him. If they would have responded to him, we might not be here today. That's right. And so that's why we plan on making sure any citizen in Memphis who had to face the brutality of this Scorpion organized crime unit, I guess as they're distinguished, will come forward. We had an older gentleman, right, uh, Mr. Reed? 66 years old said he was confronted by this unit and he was brutalized and he had pictures of his injuries. And so it was foreseeable. It was foreseeable that something tragic like this was going to happen when you have police officers given as attorney Ramanucci and uh, our legal team discussed, not just immunity, but impunity to trample on the constitutional rights of people who look a certain color, who lived in a certain community. And so we believe that this was a pattern in practice. And Tyree is dead because that pattern in practice 
went unchecked by the people who were supposed to check that. And I, I, I think we are so thankful to Chief Davis. Now, her, her leadership through this ordeal should be applauded as an example for other police chiefs and leadership. But we agree with her when she says policy means nothing if you have a culture. If that culture is rotten, you can make all the policy in the world because the culture does not respect policy. We have to make sure that the culture not only respects the policy, but the culture respects the community. And that is what we have to do if we're going to give Tyree Nichols the proper legacy. And then finally, we think about, as Ms. Rovon said, they came to her house and they told her she couldn't go to the hospital. And it wasn't until 4 a.m. in the morning that the doctor called her. They told her that her son had been pepper sprayed and tased and that he was nearby. Never told them where they were at. And so we believe that we cannot allow anybody to ever cover up crimes against our loved ones in our community. It happens far too much in America. And we have to have this conversation over and over and over again until it stops. We have to talk about this institutionalized police culture that has this unwritten law that you can engage in excessive use of force against black and brown people. We have to have this conversation because this institutionalized police culture that suggests you can do this to people in certain communities who look a certain way cannot be tolerated. It doesn't matter if the officer is a black officer, a Hispanic officer, or a white officer. It is the culture that allows them to think they can do this to Tyree, that they can do this to Keenan Anderson in Los Angeles, California, that they can do it to Byron Williams in Las Vegas. I mean, to come and attack a black man just for riding on a bicycle. It is the culture, and we have to call out this culture every time we get a chance. We gonna call it out? Yes. Call out the culture. 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 We have to call out the culture. And that has to be the conversation. Or those hashtags will continue to pile up quicker than we can keep up. And the only way, this is just the first steps to getting justice for Tyree Nichols. The only way we get full justice for Tyree Nichols is it's the institutionalized police culture that is on trial today. And the only way we get justice for Tyree Nichols is if we call out this institutionalized police culture so we can get full justice for Tyree Nichols. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Now you're going to hear from a, a great lawyer who fights for civil rights all across America, who I'm so proud to fight with yet again on the front line. My brother, Attorney Tony Ramanucci, will greet you, and then we will continue on with the press conference.
Thank you again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I, I do have a few points to cover with you today. We were just here before you a few days ago. But we have to lead from the top because I really do want to talk to you a little bit about these criminal charges, the gravity of the criminal charges, and what it means not only to these officers, but to this city, state, and our country. Remember, this supposedly emanated from a traffic stop, which turned deadly. And we talked about what we saw in the video when we were here before you Monday, that these were, some of them were unmarked squad cars. These were not all officers in uniform, only partially of them were. You can call this the Scorpion unit, if that's what you want to call it. But what these really are, because I do happen to have subject matter expertise on, this, on these cases, these are suppression units. These are saturation units. And what they really turn out to be are oppression units. And what they do is they wind up oppressing the people that we care about the most, our children, mm -hmm. our young sons and daughters, mm -hmm. who are black and brown because they are the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake, Tyree Nichols at all times was an innocent victim on that night. He did nothing wrong. He was caught up in a sting. This Scorpion unit was designed to saturate under the guise of crime fighting. And what it wound up doing instead was creating a continual pattern and practice of bad behavior. As Ben told you, there are others who are out there who have had similar experiences. Mm -hmm. And I will dare say, that when we get all the records that we need, that we will see a significant delta, a disparity between the use of force of the Scorpion unit and that of the regular Memphis Police Department and statistically on average across the country. And that is because these saturation units are given whispered impunity. Ben said it, not immunity, mm -hmm. but whispered impunity in order to carry out their design. Mm. They can't collect guns, they can't find stolen cars, unless they unwittingly trap innocent people in this web. Mm. Therefore, we are asking Chief Davis to disband this Scorpion unit effective immediately. Yeah. immediately. Yeah. The intent of the Scorpion unit has now been corrupted. It cannot be brought back to center with any sense of morality and dignity, and most importantly, trust in this community. How will the community ever, ever trust a Scorpion unit?